sing to you. Many people struggle with their identity and I find it fascinating to observe their experiences, their relations, and their journeys to discover who they are. Hello, my name is Robin and I'm 17 years old. I say we all want something in life. We want to find ourselves, accept ourselves, and belong to friends and family who, when we hurt, will laugh at you, yell at you, or humiliate you. No. Instead, they'll put their arms around you, hold you, tell you to forget about the troubles of today and hope for tomorrow. Someone who understands who you are. But is that all that identity is? When the sun sets, we want sweet dreams to consume us, to fulfill us in the wonders of the imaginary. Will I be able to see my imaginary, my world, the way others see me? We desire desire. To kiss, to hug, to touch, to love and be loved. But we can't have what we want sometimes. We have to change ourselves to fit in. We want to change ourselves to fit in. Because sometimes there's a problem. It doesn't matter who you are, but what if you don't know who you are? Well, do you know who you are? No, I don't. What do you think the problem is? I don't know. It's like, everywhere I go, I just, I wonder what my purpose here is, you know? What makes me me? I understand, Alex, but it's very important to believe in yourself. Those who accept themselves and believe in themselves have a far richer life. Well, I'd accept who I was if I knew who I was. Alex, I'm going to ask you a series of questions that may lead us to the answer. Are you sure you wouldn't like to take a seat first? Okay. What are your values? My values? Your core beliefs. I don't know. What do you need in order to live a far richer life? Like what? For example, financial security. I mean, I guess that would be nice. Maybe just being a good person, you know, just to everyone. Hmm. What are some of your hobbies? I like reading. Why? What draws you books? I just like them. Not movies or TV? Well, I like those too. I'm not sure if these questions are helping me. I know that I like books and being treated properly, but that stuff doesn't fulfill me. Alex, you're questioning my methods too soon. Move on to the next question. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. Morning person or night person? Well, what does that have to do with anything? It's very important. See, if you're a morning person and you're planning out your daily activities, if you schedule your activities for the morning, you'll actually respond better to them because you're respecting your innate biology. Okay, but how does that apply to me? Also, school sort of demands that you're a morning person for five days a week. Yes, but these are easy steps you can take by knowing your own mental clock, by understanding your social habits, your interests. These all lead to your overall happiness, and inside of that, you have to honor the most important step of all, which is being true to yourself. But how can I be true to myself if I don't know myself? How can I obey your steps to happiness if I'm unsure? We all want something in life. We want to belong, to be accepted, to be loved. I'm human. I'm alive. I feel all these things, but I don't know who I am. I don't know if I ever will. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's right, Johnny, you're the sexiest man alive. <laughs> Every girl wants a bit of you. Your body was sculpted to the proportions of Michelangelo's David. Your nose looks like it was chiseled by the gods themselves. You're so sexy you could break a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, baby, don't I look amazing? I know, I know. Johnny, you look great. I know already. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Please don't tell me you're going out dressed like that. What's that supposed to mean? I thought this was cute. And plus it's really comfortable. Yeah, maybe if you're a grandma or six years old. But we're going to a bar. You need to look hot. A bar? Johnny, you said it was a CBS in tonight. And we can't even get into a bar. Yeah, we can. You take these. <laughs> oh my God, what the hell are these? And why do you have them? 
because I seek perfection. <laughs> <laughs> there, mm -hmm. fix your hair a little. Wow, we look great. You really think so? I know so. Okay, let's go. <laughs> wow, that was much easier than I thought. I told you. So, will I see anyone you like? Uh, don't worry about it. You go have fun. Woman. <laughs> hey there, big fella. Can I help you? I'd like a tall glass of you, mister. Sorry, miss. We're gonna order something off the menu. I'm gonna need to see some ID first. Why is that? <laughs> Why don't we dance for a bit? Alrighty. Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the only ten I see. Stop, I'm blushing! <laughs> Mom? <laughs> you're only 15? <laughs> But they're dead wrong, because practically anything could trigger you. It could be the inconsistent ticking of a clock, or a loud room, or loud music that might be blaring at a concert, or someone's watch beeping because it's the top of the hour. It always ends up being scary because it's a never-ending cycle of repetition. Julia. Stop! I don't need your help, and I don't want you here! Things like this don't define you. Next up, we have Jill Hicks. She began her career as a motivational speaker after the July 7, 2005 London bombings. I can never <coughs> have imagined that a 19-year-old suicide bomber would actually teach me a valuable lesson. But he did. He taught me to never presume anything about anyone you don't know. On a Thursday morning in July 2005, the bomber and I, unknowingly, boarded the same train carriage at the same time, standing, apparently, just feet apart. I didn't see him. Actually, I didn't see anyone. You know not to look at anyone when you're on the tube, but I guess he saw me. I guess he looked at all of us as his hand hovered over the detonation switch. We were plunged into a darkness so immense that it was almost tangible. We were reaching out calling out our names, a little bit like a roll call. I'm Jill, I'm here, I'm alive, okay? Jill, here, alive, okay? Did you know anybody else on the train that day? I didn't know Allison, Allison I but I listened to her check-ins every few minutes. I didn't know Richard I'm either, Richard. but here. it mattered alive. to me that okay. he survived. I'm sorry, Jill. What was it like after the shock faded away? You must have been in so much pain. I was so determined to survive, I just shut everyone and everything out. To focus, to listen to myself, and be guided by instinct alone. I lowered my breathing rate, I elevated my thighs, and I held myself upright, and fought the urge to close my eyes. I held on for almost an hour, an hour to contemplate the whole of my life. By the time I felt the first touch from one of my rescuers, I was unable to speak, unable to say even a small word like Jill. I surrendered my body to them. I had done all that I possibly could, and now I was in their hands. And for the first time, I understood just who and what humanity really is when I was given an ID tech after being admitted to the hospital. My life had been saved purely because I was a human being. Difference of any kind had made no difference. It didn't matter whether I was rich or poor, the color of my skin, whether I was male or female, my sexual orientation, who I voted for, if I had a faith or no faith at all. Nothing had mattered other than I was a precious human life, or perhaps just a number. You're just like me. It's something anyone can see. A heart that beats, a voice that speaks the truth. 
Yes, I am a girl like you. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is so good. Right, just a venti mocha. Only cost me like twelve dollars. Oh see. I know, we have a bell for life. Go where? Stop playing dumb. You're already late. You shouldn't be doing this, officer. I'm innocent. Cut the act, Willingham. You're not fooling anyone. I'm serious. I didn't kill my children. I wouldn't kill my children. You don't know how many times I've heard that one before. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. They're all lying. I've seen your case, Mr. Willingham. The evidence is pretty convincing. I'm innocent. I swear. Our forensic scientists concluded that the fire must have been caused purposefully. You were the only other person in the house. Therefore, you are the only possible suspect. Well, then your forensic scientists are wrong, because I'm not the killer, officer. Everyone thinks you are, so I guess it doesn't matter. How could you say that? Imagine being framed for killing your own children. There's a reason I'm not, Mr. Willingham, and therefore, a reason that you are. Are you serious? How could you be so ignorant? Ignorant? You're getting on my last nerve, Mr. Willingham. I advise you to stop talking. I'm not going to stop. I'm being sent to die for a crime I never committed. You wouldn't be in this situation had you just pled guilty, Mr. Willingham. Your judge was kind enough to offer you a life sentence. It's time to go. I'm not going to admit to something I haven't done. I'd rather die with dignity than plead guilty like a coward. Now let me go, I'm innocent! You killed your own kid. You don't even have the respect to admit it. You deserve everything that's coming to you, Mr. Willingham. Shut up! Your time is up, Mr. Willingham. Cameron Todd Willingham, death by lethal injection on February 17, 2004. Wrongfully convicted of the murder of his three children. Looking into the case years later, the evidence was found to be doubtful. Furthermore, Johnny Webb was said to have lied on the witness stand for personal benefits. Most likely, Willingham was innocent. And I'm not the only one. <sighs> Mistaken identity and identity fraud. These are all things that people fear on a daily basis. But, but if you follow our simple tips and tricks, we can protect your identity. You there! Yes, you. Are you afraid of identity fraud? Are you worried about someone walking around spending your hard-earned money? Except if you're Theo! No one will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have tips and tricks for you. There are many ways to protect against identity fraud. Tips for protecting your identity. At home, make sure to keep all your important ID cards and documents in a safe, secure place. May I suggest a file marked important ID cards and documents. No thief is going to expect that. It'll throw them right off. And if you're one of those oddballs that check their bank account statement every single week, relax. You could spend that time doing something more fun, like online shopping and posting on social media. When you actually end up checking your bank statement and it looks like you've hit a wall, don't worry. No, don't worry. It just means you're getting old and losing all your memories. There are never any problems regarding the bank. It's their job. They're not allowed to make mistakes. And if you're shopping at a store, you can secure your place in line by handing your credit card to the person waiting in front of you. This way, the person can pay for your things just in case you don't get back in time. Also, remember <laughs> to never ever cover your pin while paying at a store. That's right. It makes the cashier feel uncomfortable and untrustworthy. And finally, always, always, always click email links you get from strangers. That's right. <laughs> They're just trying to make some new friends. But if you're still worried about identity fraud... Don't! No, don't. Just follow our simple tips and tricks. Our tips and tricks will keep you 99.9% .9 safe. Wow, those are some great odds. You won't find these tips and tricks anywhere else. <laughs> but if you're still worried about identity theft, you can... Call, text, Facebook message, or email us your bank account information and a scan of your health card and passport with the hashtag MyIdentity. Remember, hashtag MyIdentity. And we can protect your information for you. <laughs>
10 through 19, it's a roller coaster of body changes and a fledging sense of identity. That's a quote from a website my friend said would help me. Hi, my name is Robin and I'm 17 years old. My dad used to say, when things get you down, don't let it show. Just aspire to do better next time and try your best and work harder. But no matter how hard I try, no matter how much I aspire to do better, I can't like the way I am. My mom says I'm beautiful and that all humans are beautiful, and that we're beautiful people. But no matter how many times I look in the mirror, I see nothing beautiful about me. I've got twisted toes, crooked teeth, a stomach that's too big and acne on my face. Sometimes, no matter how much makeup I use, it won't cover up my scars. I know I'm not alone. 97% of women have an I hate my body moment every single day. But it's not our actual body shapes that make us feel this way. It's the way our brains have been trained to obsess over it. And I know I should stop, but I can't. For I, like everyone else, have fallen victims to the word, words of someone else. But the cruelest things said about me are from my own lips. I hate my body, and I can't go another day of my life hating myself. Too many people identify themselves strictly based on their body image. But they don't understand that people just want what's in the heart. Hello everybody, um, today I will be singing you a song that I wrote myself, it has a lot of personal meaning to me. It's about me going to a lost and found, but then <laughs> finding myself along the way. <laughs> it's time for goosebumps! <laughs> to get scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for goosebumps. <laughs> it's time to get scared. Oh my god. That was horrible. Amazing. Excuse me? You thought that was good? You thought that was bad? Like, um, yeah. Okay, so the whole point of the song is about him discovering who he is mm -hmm. and being at peace with who he is. Mm -hmm. The lyrics have nothing to do with that. <laughs> Clearly you do not understand art, because that was so obvious that it was like, you know, like a metaphor for like him being like afraid of his own goosebumps. So like, yeah. <laughs> so like, um, like, uh, no. <laughs> Okay, let's forget about the lyrics for a sec. He can't sing to save his, like, um, like, life. <gasps> Not only have you offended the artist himself, but you've offended me. I'm, like, his biggest fan. I have a fan? Hell yeah! <laughs> let's get out of here. All right, 
Just a second. You don't deserve your venti mocha. <laughs> Alex, you can love yourself. How? I just told you! I know, but that's no reason to abandon what you know and what you love. I didn't say that I was. I know you didn't, but Alex, don't go against what you know is wrong, even if you're not entirely sure of what's right. That's what you've been saying, isn't it? To believe in yourself, to never change, to never go back on your morals. It's so cliche. Just because it sounds cliche doesn't make it any less true. We all want something in life. We want to feel this burning feeling in our hearts, to be fulfilled in the wonders of the imaginary. Hello, my name is Robin, and I'm 17 years old. They say we all want something in life. We want to find ourselves, accept ourselves, and belong to friends and family, who when we hurt won't laugh at you, yell at you, or humiliate you. But it's not just what you think, it's what other people think of you. We all want someone to, to hold us, to, to tell us to forget about the troubles of today and to hope for tomorrow. Someone who understands who we are, but more importantly, you must understand who you are. But is that all that identity is? When the sun sets, it wants these dreams to consume us, to fulfill us in the wonders of the imaginary. But will I be able to see my world, my imaginary, the way others see me? Or will I be able to see it for myself? We desire desire, to kiss, to hug, to touch, to love and be loved. But we can't have what we want sometimes. We have to change ourselves to fit in. We want to change ourselves to fit in. And that's the problem. We all want something in life. We want something or someone who understands us more than we understand ourselves, and that's human. And that's our identity. What's yours?